OK, yeah, so the first thing um, is if we bring this model in. Um, so if I look at the grid here, the first thing we need to do is get this on the centre line because it's uh, at the moment, I mean, it is orientated correctly, um, but you sometimes find if you read in a model from another system, you may find, you know, your axis system is completely different. Um, in this case, we're OK. We've got X and Y and Z all in the correct orientation, but it's something to watch out for. But the only thing is we haven't got the model on Y0, so that's the first thing I need to do. Um, the other thing I like to do, which you may may or may not choose to do, it's entirely up to you, but I turn perspective off, which is quite disturbing um, because, the you know, now the back wheels look large compared with what they should do. Um, but that's just the way I work. And um, I know it sort of upsets designers sometimes when they see, you know, a designer comes along and wants to look at the model. Of course, I put perspective on, but when I'm working on it, I tend to have just orthographic. So what I'm going to do is, is I need to find the centre point of this model. And one way that I'm thinking of doing this is just finding a, the same spot left and right. I can draw a line between the two and then find the midpoint. Um, and the wheels seem like the obvious place. So if I look, zoom into there, fortunately, let's take the grid off. OK, so let's let's what we'll do then is we'll separate separate out the objects first of all. So um, let me go into the objects there because it'll be easier to pick then or or define define a point there. So I'm picking that object and I'm in the object lister. So so far we've just looked at layers, but there is also by object. And if we look in there, it says it's picking something called root node. And if I open that out, you can see all of the objects underneath that node, what it calls a node. So it's just a, a grouping, really, of these of these objects. Um, now, the there was an old fashioned method of looking at which which is called the SPD window, um, which I don't know whether it's useful anymore. Obviously, I, I used to use that. I'm not even sure where they put it anymore. Um, it's down here, SPD window. And it shows it in a different format. So it's saying this this group here um, and all of these objects underneath it grouped together. But you can see that it's it's pretty difficult to see what the heck's going on. If you zoom in enough, you can see the names appear as you zoom out. What you can get from that is an overall idea of the structure. Um, but you can do the same thing in the object lister, to be honest. I haven't really used the SPD window for some time. Um, I'm finding this is actually doing the same job. But in the SPD window, you can actually use it. It's just like any other window, so you can zoom in and translate and so forth. Um, it's just another way of looking at things. But whether that's useful to you at any time, I'm not sure, um, because now they've got the object lister. Um, but what we want to do here, we've got one group, and I would like to divide this up into layers so that we can find objects um, easier. I mean, we could go and find an object. So if I pick on one of those, you can see that's an object there, but the, all the names are meaningless um, to me. Um, I, I mean, you could, you could work in the object lister and not use layers, but I think that would be quite tricky. It's not something I've got around to, to trying yet, to be honest. I like to still have things in layers. So what I would do is take the whole object. So I'm picking root node, which picks everything. And then I'm going to go into edit and I can ungroup things. So I want to get rid of that node. The node is by itself uh, has no geometry in it. It's just a, a name which groups all of these things together. So I can I can delete that node. That's one way of getting all of this up to the top level. So if I say go. You can see that the node has disappeared and now we've got individual objects so I can now pick individual objects. Um, obviously I could do that before but the beauty of this now is if I pick on the screen it just picks the one object so whatever that one happens to be in this listing it's got some arbitrary name. If you want to be really methodical you could you know you could give the object a name um, but I'm more interested in just putting these things onto layers. So I'm going to create some layers here. So I'm going to create. I'll call, call this um, body upper or something. 
and we can assign that to that. So just hide it. And so we can gradually just remove the things that we, we want. So I'm not going to bother putting doing all of these layers because you know how layers work. Um, but what I am going to do is pick that wheel there. And that wheel there. Create a layer. Front alloys. And assign that to that. And then what we could do is switch those off. And I'm not going to bore you by showing you how to divide all of that up because you know how to do that. Um, I'm just going to pick all of those objects, stick them on that layer, and I'll just call that misc misc for miscellaneous. Um, we'll get rid of that, and then we we'll just bring the alloys back. Um, and then I've got that just by itself um, to look at. All we want is the Y value. So if I use Control Alt here, I can just slide up to that point there. So I'm putting in a, a line from left to right, from there to there. So we know that you know that the Y value of that should be one of them plus whatever it is, and the other one's going to be minus whatever it is. Um, the midpoint will be where we want Y zero to be. Um, now, just to make this easier to pick, probably. If I go and let's bring everything back in, yeah. Um, so if I put in a line from here down to here, say, why didn't that work? I'm not top view. Let's do that again. So a line from the center point there down here in the extraction, we we'll just bring everything back in. Of course, the, the beauty of having all of that grouped is that before, was that I could pick it as one group, but I've I've lost that now because I've put things on layers. Um, so I'm not sure whether maybe I do need to group everything together, but I think I should name everything up. Maybe in an ideal world, that's what I should do. Um, but what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to pick. Um, I'll pick the curves and then I'll pick. All the other objects. So the curves are deselected now. Um, I'm going to make the change the pivot point of those curves. Move the pivot points to this point here. And then bring our grid back up. And then I want to move the whole thing across in Y to Y zero. My grid looks incredibly dense here. This is far too difficult to read. Um, so I'm going to move this across. Um, now oh, I'm moving the pivot. So let's move the whole thing across and in the Y direction and we snap it to one of these grid points. Let's just check we've got that in the right place. So that looks like we've got it central now. Um, I could have moved the curves with, with, with it, to be honest, couldn't I? That would have been Quite a good idea, but it isn't, we don't really need those curves anymore. I'll just delete them. And of course, at that point, I'm going to save it. OK. Right. So I think, you know, the next thing is to start looking around the model. Um, we can ignore the wheels for the time being. We just take those out. And so Obviously, we need to separate those out. So I'm just going to create a layer. Um, call this wheels. In reality, I would go around the whole model and just build all my layers first rather than doing it a little bit at a time. But it's it's fine um, for doing what we're doing here. Just gradually move things into When we come to work on the wheels, we can split those up even further. I've just dumped them into a layer called wheels front, but that in time that might become, you know, smaller and smaller um, quantities of data, and then we can 
I was starting off with layers, but like we saw before, you know, folders are very useful as well. There will come a point where I'll start putting things into folders. Maybe, you know, when if we're breaking down the wheels, I'll probably put those into folders so that um, it's easier to find the whole object there. Um, I mean, really, we only want half of this, half of the model. Um, we we like this stuff across the center, really, but we just we don't need actually both sides of those wheels, to be honest. Uh, so I could have deleted them. But I'm mainly just trying to get them out of the way for some being. Now, I'm not sure how this is split up. So I'm just going to, I don't know what to call something. Sometimes I don't know what to call things. I just call them, I'm just going to call that blackouts, but they're not really blackouts. They're sort of wheel arches and stuff. I'm just going to put those together. So I've got the exhausts there. This is all the boring stuff in a way because it's just admin really. But it's very important to do. Um don't really want that to I just just chuck all that. But I think the area I'm gonna start working on is just the upper body. So I'm gonna work on the, the glass house and the, the green areas. Um, so let's just put everything else in here. It's just a that we don't need. Oh, of course, there's always two ways of doing things. You can select. I mean, really, I should, I suppose, select the. You know, sometimes it's easier to select the things you want. Um, and then you. So I want all of this. That's what I want. Um, I can make that all invisible. And it's actually that bit as well. I probably should include that. And then you can just make everything else. Put it in the, the dumping ground. Um, so this 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 bit I'm called calling um, everything else for the time being until I've decided um, what I'm going to do there. So if I bring everything back because um, we've got that selected, if I say body upper, we've just got this, which is what I'm really interested in for the time being. Um, I'm not sure there's anything in miscellaneous. So let's. Pick those objects. Oh, there are some things in there. What have we got in there now? Is it a bit of a duplicate going on there? I'm not sure. So I, I, I'm um, sort of should be explaining what I'm doing, but just in case you didn't catch on, but. Um, I'm using things like visible, invisible, um, hide unselected. So that's so I'm using uh, my shortcut keys um, for those things in case you wonder why things are coming and going. Um, so I should have explained that as I was going, but. Yeah, so I've got stuff in miscellaneous like that. I don't know why it's ended up there, but. Doesn't matter. So I'm just going to put all of that, I think. In I just call it body up or although it isn't actually body up, but it doesn't matter again. So I'll get rid of that layer there. So we're just in body upper. Um, now, of course. Um, 
what we've been looking at here is all mesh and really I should be putting that into the, either the, the layer names or somehow putting that into a folder. Um, so maybe I should make a folder. I find is the you know as you develop the model, you start to to understand what how it should be organised. So I don't know whether I'm organising in the best possible way, but it sort of doesn't matter. Um, because we can change it quite easily. So I'm going to create a new folder now um, just called. Surfaces. And I'll call it version one because there could well be numbers of different versions. And then within that we can right click and we can create a new layer. And we'll call this. I'll just call it body for the time being, but. It's whatever goes in there. And as I start to build things, I try and structure them. I mean, you know, certainly I'm not the best person at organising things. I do find my models get into a complete mess before I start organising them quite often. But it is really important to get everything organised, especially as, especially as you start to get multiple versions. So if I end up with five versions of this, I want to be able to have them all in individual folders. Um, and know exactly where I, where I am. Um, so if we look at this. model here. Um, we sort of don't. I mean, it's useful to have the the mesh across the center line because we're going to build surfaces across the center line rather than a half model. Um, but we don't really need all of the detail on the other side of that uh, mesh. So if I go into top view here. Then and I'm going to save this now again. Okay. So worthwhile saving. I mean, you can see that's like every 10 minutes or so, sometimes even less than that. I, I literally save hundreds of files a day sometimes if I'm in the middle of a you know, real job. Um, and the, the, the naming I use, which again, entirely up to you, but I have the date in reverse order. Um, so I've got year, month, date, um, and then the time, um, and that way you get completely unique numbers. The other thing is that, although it doesn't really matter, but it's it's happened to me before where the dates have all got gone missing, um, and the times. Um, doing this way with the date in reverse order, if you put those in alphabetical order, order with the date going backwards, you find that it's exactly the same as the date order. Um, so even if the dates got muddled up, maybe if you copied all of the files across to some other system or something, the dates disappear. Um, but you can put these in um, alphabetic order and you'll find it comes out the same as, as if you'd got it in date order. So that's why I do that. Um, I, mean, I used to call them A, B and C in terms of time, but I noticed somebody uh, one of my trainees once was putting times in. I thought that's the perfect solution, really. It just, you know, they're completely unique numbers. You're not going to repeat them, so perfect. Um, yeah, so if we take this, uh, that piece of mesh there, for example, and I'm isolating that, so I'm using um, display, I hide unselected. I just did Alt U there to do that. Um, and then we can we can um, cut that if we wanted to get rid of all of this detail around here, because this is just going to be irrelevant. But I will clip a bit across the center there. So if we go into mesh, um, we can do a. So you've got mesh subset here. Um, if I double click on mesh subset. You get this menu here. And you can put in things like normal angle brush or lasso. So so what what these do is with brush, if you click on there and I just oh hang on a second. So I pick the yeah, pick the um the mesh. Um and then if I just drag a brush across there, you can actually say I don't want to do any of this. Um and the pick radius, that circle that's appearing is this value in here. So if I want to make it smaller, of course I can a bit more refined. That's one way of doing it. Um the other option is you've got normal angle. So 
if I so what I'm trying to do is just cut this bit out. So these these are just ways of selecting that area and deleting it. Um, the other way is to say normal angle. So if I pick on an area like here, it finds all of the bits of mesh that are at a similar angle to to this um, within this angle. Well, at the moment it's at 90 degrees, which actually doesn't make any sense at all. So let's just reset the whole thing. Um, oh, no, it's not resetting. It's resetting the menu. I'll deselect, pick nothing, um, pick that again, and we'll use normal angle. But I changed the normal angle down to something like 10, 15, 14, or whatever. Um, so if I pick a point here, it finds all of the mesh that is within that angle. So the smaller this angle, if I make it three, it'll find a smaller area. As I increase the angle, it finds bigger areas. And that's very useful if you're picking picking mesh. Um, so whether the mesh has come from something like this model or whether it's come from a laser scanner, this is very, very useful. And we can combine these, as you can see, you know, so I can do a bit of brushwork around here. I can use that normal angle. The other one is lasso. Um, so that's what I'm going to use here. So lasso means I pick some points in that view. And then when I hit the space bar, so down here, you can see these these options here. So space bar is select at the minute and it selects that area that I've lassoed. So for what we're doing, um, lasso is probably the most useful. I can just say, well, I'm just going to ignore this this whole area here. Don't want that. And I can then subset it. So now the space bar will be subset. And the, the bit that's selected is this one. So I want to actually pick that that one and delete it. So we don't we get rid of the bit that we don't want. Now I'm going to bring everything back in. So I'm using um, Alt V, which is visible. Um, across the center, I, I, I think I'm just going to leave all of the glass house in. Um, because it doesn't really it doesn't really get in the way. This was just getting in the way. There's just too much data to look at. And I suppose what I could have done at the same time when I was lassoing was pick up this bit here um, at the front, but it sort of doesn't matter. This was the one that I was most bothered about because when you try and work with this, it's going to be difficult to see what's going on when you've got all of that data in. Um, this lower part is not so important. So I'm actually going to get rid of that and put it in, um, it's in mesh, isn't it, of course? Um, so here I'm going to call that um, new layer. So I call that bumper front. You might wonder why I call it bumper front. It's just if you put that in bumper front and bumper rear, they're going to be together um, alphabetically. So although they're not alphabetic, are they? Um, so let me put that in there. because we don't need that detail at the minute. We're more interested in this line. Now, one of the things that um, I was looking at was how this this green area relates to the glass house. So I'm, I'm feeling that I, I should start on the glass house. It really doesn't matter where you start. Sorry, something's falling, falling, up, falling apart here. Um, really doesn't matter where you start, but if we start on the glass house, it seems to me that maybe there's a relationship between these sides and this green area um, so i'm just going to have a look and i'm going to bring up the cross-section editor um, and just put some x sections on everything um, just get an idea of what the shape is doing and it may be you know because this model's been done um, in mm. i think it was 3d s max or something i think that's what lardo said um, you know, you won't expect it to be 100% accurate because of the nature of that, that software. Um, my feeling is that, you know, when you when you look at this bit that's coming down at that angle, then that's going at a slightly different angle. My feeling that, we, you know, Lado's not here to, to ask him, but my feeling would be that that angle and that angle would be the same, um, that those that should be an offset really of that. That would be my gut feeling really um and the moment's coming back on itself and i think it would be 
more natural for for those to be related to each other. So I think if I start building this, um, obviously if I build it to the angles that we've got in here and then offset it, it's going to give quite a different feel to what's going on around this uh, rear rear haunch. Um, we're going to have to end up with an angle that's sort of halfway between the two. So I'm sort of imagining a line that's going from from here up to here that's sort of halfway between those two angles. So we we're going to actually push this line inboard a little bit, I think, to make that happen. Um, but it gives it by I mean, even if that's not what the designer wants, um, if we start with that, we can always change it later anyway. The whole, always you wanted to um, create models that are easy to modify. So try and make them as simple as possible and keep them simple as long as you possibly can. Um, as they develop, of course, more complexity gets introduced. Around here, you know, that angle, this seems quite natural that this angle is going to be different to this. It's not going back on itself. This one's going back on itself. That seems a bit, um, bit odd to me. Um, doesn't seem quite right. This one is absolutely fine. That one coming off at a, an angle going the other way seems perfectly, perfectly OK. So what I'm going to do is, is start with this glass house so we can split this up a little bit further then. So we'll call that glass house. Or greenhouse. Um, and we'll pick that object. So I'm just picking all of that. And that. I mean, you can't, when you're looking at these models, you can't anticipate absolutely everything. So you're trying to look at the, the big picture. Um, and, um, you know, you, you, you'll find that the, it, your, what you first thought is going to work ends up not working and you have to modify things and that's why you know simple models are the best so in, in this area what i want to do is put in the y zero section so i'm going to get rid of the x section for now I, so i want to put in y zero section so we can build a curve on the center line there so i'm going to go into so i've gone into plus um, axis discrete y and we'll put in zero here enter so we can obviously rename that. It doesn't really matter, to be honest, because we're probably going to get rid of it at some point, but why zero? And then we go into side view and have a look at that. Um, we can we, we can actually make that if we go into Windows um, sections again. Um, where am I? Cross section editor. Um, we can actually make this into a curve, not that it's a usable curve, but it's just helpful to um, to have sometimes. Um, so you can go and say, um, go into tools and promote. And it will create you a NURBS curve, not a good curve, but NURBS curve there. Um, if we pick that curve, um, it tells us there's, you can see it's not a good curve. It's it's just basically picking all the points on the mesh and giving us a nerves curve. So it's degree one with 242 spans, which you would never want to use. Um, and then we've got, it's actually missed this bit out. So there must be a little gap between the two. I think it's, or they're not joined up. It doesn't matter. Um, let me just go into their windows. Um, cross section editor. Um, and then we go and promote that bit of the curve as well. So we've got the whole thing. And then we can, um, so this curve here, let's, let's try and keep this as clean as we can. Um, so I'm just creating a, a layer here. So I'll call that curves for the time being. We just put those curves into there. And we can just get rid of the, we can just blank out all of the mesh. So we've got that. Um, this this looks like we might be able to do this in one curve. So let's make sure we're on that layer there. 
So I go into curves and just create a new curve. Um, I don't know why I double picked. I don't need to because I've got it all set up um, so that I can create any curve. I'm just going to pick that end point and I'm going to pick that point over there. Now, there's a, a little hook on the end there, which we're not interested in. So I'll just take it back a bit. Um, we don't want that detail in this particular curve. In fact, that point there. We can um, just move up a little bit further. Why is that going there? Oh, it's, mm, I don't know why that's doing that. Maybe I was just not in the side view or something. I don't know. I was going to freeform it. Um, and then we can, I mean, of course, you could put your points, you could do it by putting points in. Um, but quite often, that must have been picking the wrong thing or something. Better. Maybe I was picking the curve, not the CV. Let me just try that again. That's better. I think I was just doing something very silly. I must have been picking the curve or something. I don't know what I was doing. So let's pick that curve there, change the degree. Um, I'm going to start off with three, maybe. Um, all these points around. Why have I got what's going on here? Ah, it's because I've got that was not picking a point. That's why that's what my problem is when I because I've got hotkey C, which brings up this menu. I hadn't noticed that it got this edge rather than a single point. So I think that's what was going on. It was picking both points and then putting them all together. So I just want one point and I'm moving it. So this will hopefully now move into place. So I start off with um, you know, the, the low degree, which obviously isn't enough. Um, and I'm doing this with it. Now, you, to make the simplest possible curve, I can I could push these points really close together. Usually that's not a good thing to do, though. I mean, if it's if it's just a concept model, um, it doesn't really matter too much. Um, you'll find uh, there's some companies where they insist that all the, you know, for certainly for a glass surfacing, they want the CVs fairly equally spaced. These are these are the opposite way. There's other companies um, like Geely, where I've just been working last year, um, where they were quite happy with pushing the, the CVs together. Um, Actually, that works quite well. <laughs> um, the, the problem with pushing the CVs really close together is that when you come to a shape um, like the side glass, for example, which maybe doesn't have such a big peak in the middle, then you want a more uniformly spaced set of CVs. And then trying to get the two to match up becomes very difficult. You, you either end up with CVs like this on the side glass, which just isn't really great. Um, or if you if you make these very equally spaced, which will work on the side glass, you'll end up having to put. They don't have to be perfectly equally spaced, but you might end up with having to put um, a lot of you know, have, have to increase the degree here to get the shape that you want. But I think as long as it's I think what you want is you really want to, to make it. Um, and I don't know how, how to express this other than just to say a reasonable amount of pushing the CVs together is OK. Um, if you just if you make it really extreme, if you push them right together like that, that's not good. That's going to cause you problems somewhere. If you make them. Something that something where they they're sort of pushed together where the where you've got more curvature, then that's OK. Um, if you make them completely uniform, you know, make these distances exactly the same, then you just end up with a higher degree than you really need. So you've got to find a bit of a compromise between the two. Um, 
and it is trial and error because until we put in the surfaces down the side we don't know how this is all going to work together but i think you know something like that is a reasonable spacing a sort of push together here where it's tighter and then you know wider here but it's not too extreme of course we're not achieving the shape and we have got to increase the degree so we increase the degree a bit move that cv so we're keeping that cv more or less where it is this is why i'm doing it in stages so that we end up with a nice result if you do it in one go then the spacing can be quite um irregular and it works better if you do it one step at a time so maybe i mean i know the original it, original mesh is not something that we have to be within 0.5 of the mill or anything we we're just doing this by eye um but we want it you know we want it reasonably close um to where the model because the model looks a good one so we want it want it close to that data um at the same time what we've got to be careful of is that we don't have any inflections in that curve because we know it all goes one way it's just concave all the way um so the things to watch out for on these ends you can see that that point that point and that point are quite straight the same on that one so there is a possibility that the curvature here is going to inflect um it i can't tell until i put curvature on um so i'm going to have to put some curvature on there which is under one of these locators isn't it um so we could we're not interested in the value it doesn't matter uh, we're just interested in the is scaling that up so i want to make sure that doesn't go below zero here and the same here so this one's fine this one looks like it's quite close difficult to tell if that's gone to zero that's amazing so it's actually positive which is which is good um so it means that you know if those, if those cvs there were on a straight line then that would go to zero um if that point is too high up then this will inflect so you'll get the curvature coming down here so let me just demonstrate that so you know if i move that up any further it crosses over which is not what we want um if i move it down then it becomes more positive but of course we're pulling away from the shape but we've got it pretty much down to zero there it's gone completely flat at the end to end so that's fine um it's it's going the right way it's that slightly that side um so we'll go with that don't really need these original curves so they're called x sec there don't really need them anymore particularly and let's bring everything back in that we had um i think we switched off the whole mesh i can actually close that up just to make it easier to see what's going on and turn on the mesh which we know has only got the the glass house in here looks like a dolphin doesn't it or something i think going on here which is quite a nice shape um so having created that um we could extend this out a bit yeah again we've got to be careful that at least as far as it goes we haven't got um curvature that inflects there and we haven't so that's good um probably worth extending that a little bit as well now that's crossed over a little bit so um if we go to the left hand side but as long as the crossover is below here it doesn't really matter but i will just adjust this point maybe i'll adjust this point as well because you know we'd, if it was just on a straight line um then that would be absolutely zero there if you want to do that um you know you could put those on an absolute straight line for example if you put in a, a line from here to here then we can see that that point actually that's, yes of course it's because it's crossing over there um forgotten that um if we go it's picking that point there and we just move that up in the z direction you can see when it when it touches that straight line um we get to zero there so we, we, I've just used that as a, a visual guide to when we're on a straight line, which gives us that um, completely flat bit there. Um, now we don't need to measure this back to the mesh or anything like that. We're not interested in that. 
Let's shade that up again. So we're trying to get a shape that's coming across here. This is a very interesting. It's interesting where this is coming in because um, the, the A pillar there really isn't where I would expect it to be, which is that point. You'd expect the A pillar really to be on, on the, there where the shape is, is consistent with it. I don't know whether we can, whether we might have to change what's going on there. Yeah, I think I think this A pillar needs to be modified actually so that it comes into this corner. We're not creating the A pillar at the minute, but um, it's something to, to think about. But at the moment, we're just trying to create the whole shape without, we're not interested in how this trims out. The fact that it's got a color split at the minute, we're just going to create surfaces. Um, down here, what's happening here? This just, I think, I'm sure that this isn't necessarily supposed to curve back on itself. And if it does, then that's probably a local um, the, the trouble is with mesh, you can sometimes read too much into it and we just want to keep it simple. If it, if there is detail in there that I'm missing or that I'm, I'm not understanding from the from the mesh model, then we can add it later. If we've got a simple model, it's fine. Um, now we could, um, I think last week I was sort of showing you how you can just use MS draft, which is one option. We just MS draft from here. Um, and then we just start m modifying that that model. That's a perfectly fine way of doing it. Um, I think here because we've got a defined shape, really doesn't matter to be honest. But we could um, maybe try putting in a curve um, across here. So I'm going to go. I'm mean, ignoring where the A pillar is at the minute. I'm just going to go down to where. Um, I imagine there's a theoretical intersect. So we've got a, a line coming around here and a line coming around here. And there's somewhere they, if you take out the blend there, there's a theoretical intersect between those two. Um, let's have a look at that side view. Um, again, we can clean this, these up, these areas up. Um, you know, it's quite a wobble in there, um, which we can get rid of um, and clean that up. So. We should make, I think that should be a straight line between there and there or a plane. Um, so setting up a plane might be a good idea. Um, so let's try that. So I'm just going to, rather than setting up the plane in, um, immediately, I'm just going to put a point in there and a point in here. And then I'm going to move that point around um, to try and create a straight line that sort of approximates the bottom edge of that. Um, we we also need to bring if we bring in the upper body again, so we're we're way we're quite a long way below the body there. Let me just bring that curve outboard so I can see it. A lot of the job of surfacing is it's not looking at something and thinking right this is the method steps one to ten this is how it's going to be be job done. Um, it's trying to work out what's going on um, and and you try things and they may not work out. Um, you just have to, you know, you just keep persevering and, and changing things and until it's it's correct. It's it's a very iterative process. Um, so that straight line the, the, on the body, there's nothing there. Uh, there is no straight line. Um, in that sense. So whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I'm not sure. Um, but it gives us a starting point. If I put it in a plane there and we start working on that plane, um, then hopefully we'll develop some clean shapes which we can then trim back differently and modify and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so that that line there, I'm going to just take that line. Um, I could move back into that that spot there or if I go into the information window um, you can actually go and look at the, where it's transformed to so it's, it says it's translated zero and then I've moved it in Y by some strange amount and then nothing in Z so I can actually just go and set that to zero there and hit I again just get rid of the information window um, so we're going to create a plane off this line so we're going to work with that 
Um, and the reason for that is that when we look at this in top view, I'm going to create some curves here and round here on that plane, um, which will hopefully make things um, easier to work with. So let's go into um, construction and we want to set up a plane here. And the plane is going to be what they call a slice. So with slice, if I say go and I pick that end point there and that end point there. And then I hit the space bar. It's given me this plane here. So the, the two points I've, I've, used, I've created there give me the y direction and. Um, and, the, you know, the x direction is just taken care of because it's straight into the view that I was in. Now let's get rid of the grid. So we're now we're now on that um, plane. So if I look in top view, I'm looking at that plane and I can now start to create the curves that I want to start this shape. So let's go into curves, control point. Um, I'll get rid of that curve down the center. I don't actually need it anymore. Do, I don't know whether you noticed, but that plane is blue and was blue when I created it, which means it has no history. But you do find that some planes have history um, just as a I might have mentioned this before. But if you go into plane um, and I said, um, say geometry, for example, and I pick that curve. Um, if I go out of there, you can see that that's slightly green and that means it's got history. So if I was to change that curve, that plane would change with it. But but some some planes have history, some don't. There's no sort of explanation in the menu about that, but it's something that actually is, can be very useful, um, can also cause problems um, because you you find sometimes the plane's got history on it. You didn't realize you change your curve, the plane changes um, and that can completely screw things up. So something to watch out for. So if I look in that in the top view. And I'm going to create a, a curve off here, so I'm going to go pick that end point. I'm just going to go out in the y direction so you can see you know that center curve i just created from degree two again this one i'm creating from degree two the reason is if i do it actually I, yeah i'm doing that wrong really aren't i what i want to do is take that and extend it that way it sort of doesn't matter actually whether i extend that or not so let's not extend it um i said i was going to create a, a model right across the center line so this one here um, really needs symmetry across the center line. So if we put it on our, um, you can see that's that's what I want is a curve that goes right across there. So I'm going to pick that curve um, and then I'm going to make it symmetric. So if I go into object edit um, and symmetry it. Now we might find that it ends up looking like that, which basically means that the curve has gone to zero. It's got zero length. Um, now what you can do so it's, it's basically picked the wrong length, wrong side. It's the zero side that it's picked and said, we'll make make that sym symmetric in that sense. But you can flip it the other way. So if I hit the space bar, you get the other option, which is the one we, we obviously want. Um, so we've got symmetry on there. And then we can increase the degree. So let's make that, say, degree three. Um, now, the, the, the rule about where these CVs should be in terms of the Y position is always when you've got um, glass house or you know bonnet X section, all of those sections are usually flatter in the middle and tighter towards the outer edge. So you always want to position these CVs towards the outside edge. So you would want to move this point here um, outboard and you can see because we've got symmetry on, of course, the other one moves as well. Um, if I move that in X, because we've got symmetry, they both move. Um, if I go and pick that one, we can move that around there. Let's put some shading on. So we'll have to play around with these points to try and get that shape that we want, but the general rule is that we've got these closer together here um, towards the outside edge than in the center where the, where it's very much flatter shape. So something like that. We don't have to, you know. 
spend hours and hours and hours getting the curve perfect because it's when you put this it's only when you put the surfaces in um that you get to see whether um you've got the shape that you want um or you know whether it fits the the mesh you can see by pulling these points around of course it's come off the the data there that but that does come off the curve rather than the center curve but that doesn't matter um now we want to create um, some sort of shape going through all of this lot. Um, and probably we might as well just start from the back edge actually and and try and create a, like a rail surface across there. Um, how this is going to work out, I have no idea, but we'll we'll have a go. Um, I mean, the, the change from here to here is quite dramatic. It's very, very um small distance here compared with here so it really wouldn't matter if we put in another separate curve here but sometimes the best thing to do is to take the curve that you've got and just copy it as a starting point at least so that you know that the cvs are spaced the same so when you create a surface between the two it's going to have you know if i created a skin surface between those two it would have perfect perfectly placed cvs but um probably not necessary here but i'm just going to do it anyway um, and then this this one here, we want to um, rotate that. So if we go into edit, um, what is it? Edit object, um, and then we can rotate that by. Um, so we're going to rotate it about the. We have to be careful here because we're in that in this um, top view here. So if I put the grid on, um, it's because we use slice in that side view, actually the X direction is that way. So we want to rotate it about the X direction, not the Y direction because it's we're in a different plane. So if I go edit um, object here, um, we don't need to duplicate it. Um, and we're going to rotate that uh, about X. So it's going to be 180 degrees. Then do that. So get rid of the, the copy, we don't need that one. Oh, the other way to do it is if you go into um, into into the information window. Surprise, surprise, you can do a similar thing here. So um, actually this is showing you that's confusing, actually, but it's showing you in global space where that is. So it's saying that's 180. But if I wanted to take it back to where it was, you can put in zero there. Um, that didn't work, did it? Should be able to put in zero there. Don't know why that's not working. Hmm. Interesting. I should you should be able to put in zero. Okay. Well, I'm not going to worry about that. But um, let's move that down to here. Um, across to here. We might as well put the pivot point actually on the center of that curve there. So I'm just going to make sure it's snapping to the center, and then move that to there. Um, that's surprisingly close in shape, to be honest, to to what's going on there, because we, you know, we're slightly below this edge here, so um, it's not going to be this. It's obviously not the same um, point there. I didn't mean to move that around. I just messed up the view. Um, so we do that. Um, just going to save that. I think we're going to when, when I do this, I'm I'm pretty certain the CV is going to be end up looking horrible. <laughs> um, but we'll see. So I'm not going to actually change that for the time being. Um, I'm just going to go into surfaces and we're going to do a rail. So with rail, you know, the the most perfect rail is going to be one generation curve. So this is the generation curve, one rail curve, which is going to be that one. Um, we're going to have two generation curves, so we're going to have that one and that one. So I'll put two generation curves in there. I'm going to open that out. And what we'll do here, um, and the other thing about rail is you get the most perfect result if you go for natural. I think this is probably going to be not quite what I want at all. Um, but we will try it anyway. Um, and I want history on so I can change the curves if necessary. So let's go and pick the first. So it says select, select generation curve, that one there. 
select the next generation curve, that one there, select primary rail curve. Oh, it wasn't too bad. But yeah, I was expecting something like this where it goes up and down quite a lot because um, we're going, uh, it's because we're almost going through, well, we are going through um, 180 degrees. We've sw switched that curve right round. So I wasn't expecting these CVs to be um, brilliant, I must say, um, but they're not too bad. Not as, not as better than I thought. And of course, we, because we use the same curve front and rear, we've got, you know, precisely, you know, these are all on Y sections. Um, now, of course, the, the width, we don't actually want all of this width, but I think what we'll do is we'll do a trim convert um, probably to get get across here. I'm ignoring the the old A pillar, as you know, um, hence, you know, we'd, we're not, that's not really the corner of the data, it's over here somewhere. Um, but again, if we keep everything simple, we can change these things. You know, if that wants to move, if that needs to move back at some point in the future, um, we can we can do that. Um, now, what am I going to do here? What was I going to do? Um, I think that's pretty much as good as as we need um, because I've got history on. We could, you know, we could take that curve there and we could scale that um, we could do non-proportional oh, actually scale uh, rather um, scale that down so we could you know see what happens if we do that actually not what we want let's do a non-proportional scale or we could move the cvs on the on the curve but it's almost i don't think it's going to help much um, let's um, go into here and we'll create a new layer and we call this. So I'm not always I've not always got my layers set up perfectly as I'm going along. You just every so often you just make sure that you manage what's going on. Um, now, I don't don't need these curves now because I've got my my surface, which is I've just it's just a, creating those curves is simply a way of um, creating something um it really doesn't matter how we get to the surface that we want um but you just you just want to start from somewhere whether it's ms draft or rail or skin it doesn't matter um because once we've got it then we can start moving modifying it um so this one here this is obviously a symmetric should be a symmetric surface so we need to put symmetry on um that's the first thing to do and then in top view, we can see the CVs on on these outer edges, for example. Um, you know, are rubbish in terms of the spacing. Yeah. You know, these ones are fine because they they come straight off that center curve, but these ones are rubbish. So I want to move those around a bit. I'm just going to use slide um, and move those around. Using slide means that I'm not really changing the shape too much. Um, I just want to make these look better. So patterns of CVs are everything. So you can see I'm not not I haven't really looked at the mesh at all yet. I'm just trying to get the pattern of CVs looking um, reasonably good. So sort of similar proportions to what's going on here. Do those do that on the outside. Um, so that looks that looks OK in plan view. Um, and now what I want to do is see, you know, I can shade that up and I can see, you know, we're not getting the shape that we need um, at the minute. I can see that just from shading it. Uh, but the other th tool that's really useful is the cross section editor. So if we put in X section, sorry. Oh, yeah, X sections are not going to be any use to us. Um, we've, we've built this on a plane, actually, haven't we? So I built that on a relative to a plane that we defined here. Um, and funnily enough, that bottom edge is sort of on the same plane, which wasn't what I was expecting at all. but but that's useful. I think it's useful to carry on in this plane. Um, it is a little bit confusing this plane because we've got it, you know, like I say, we've got the X, section, X direction going that way, which is weird. Uh, and it takes a bit of getting used to. It would be better just to redefine another plane. Um, so if I zoom in there, um, I'm just going to create another plane um, and I'm going to do that. Simplest thing really is to just go three point go and then I can use Alt. First, firstly, I want the X direction in that direction and the Y direction over there. So I can set that as the plane. So now we've got a more normal 
orientation it's the similar orientation um to our um world space here um and then i'm going to name this um so i'll call this it's important to you know again it's really important to name things as you're going along um, unless they're temporary but so many temporary things end up being permanent i find um, that it's actually worth naming them even if i chuck it away later on um, so that it doesn't matter um, it's just good to keep on top of all of these things um, so what we'll what we can then do is if we go into the um, um, cross section editor here um, and we can now so when I set x axis aligned it's just much more understandable that is the same orientation as our um, pretty much the same orientation as our global axis system our world axis system which we should be able to see the I can't actually see the where the axis system is but the, the original one is grayed out somewhere you can you can should be able to see it um, so this gives us a great idea of the shape. I think at the minute, because we're trying to just rough stuff in at the minute, that's far too far too many sections. Um, we can change that to, to do it at 200 mil in increments. But the other thing that I should have checked right at the beginning, because this has caught me out before, is making sure that the model scale is correct, because um, but I, I do know in this model it is, it's actually full size. Um, but I've been caught out before where it's one tenth scale and then you put in your sections at 100 mil increments and you think, oh, this doesn't look right. Um, and of course, it's then very difficult to. It's much more difficult to work out what's what's going on. Um, so you want to make sure it's, you know, full size before you start. Um, now I'm just going to do a little bit more here. So let's go into into this menu here so I'm, I can see here it's much too rounded compared with um, what's going on so in the center we're looking for we're just trying to create a block that goes to from across from the center to a theoretical point here and then the sides will be coming off that so let's flatten that out a little bit now I've gone here you can see from my pattern of CVs I've pushed that too far it's actually above that point and that cannot happen. So if I push that up to there, if I pushed it um, to the same Z value as that, then that would also be not right because it would be saying it's I'm looking for that completely flat across the center. So the fact that I've had to push that up so far um, means that I can't do it. I can't do that change all with that one point. I've also got to move this point. So again, looking at the patterns of CVs, we need to have these patterns um, looking consistent with each other. Um, very difficult to see when you've got it looking from the front view because we've got this um, surface going over so much. Um, so sometimes you look at it from the front view and then you just rotate it down a bit. So that we try and again, it's still is very difficult to see because we've got sections on and mesh on, etc. I could reduce the mesh actually let's um, do that so if we go into let's get rid of the curvature there and open up transparency um, we can make the mesh more transparent so that we get rid of that a little bit um, so I don't know whether you can see that but you've got CVs here going that those last two CVs have that angle to them um, because of, this is such a, a big shape that we're creating here it goes from that end to that end. That's quite dramatic, the change. This one looks fairly consistent. This one sort of looks like it needs to possibly come down a bit. And this one needs to go up a bit. Um, and and I'm looking just at the patterns of CVs, really. Um, in fact, we, what we could do, let's take the, the glass house mesh off completely and take our sections off. So we just take those off. So this is what I'm looking at, really, is this pattern of CVs. It's a it's a little bit tricky because we've got it going from that angle to that angle just because of uh, the shape that we're trying to create. But looking at the CVs, you know, that one looks like it needs to come down. That one needs to go up. Again, I'm not not referencing the data, 
at all but i just know that you know if we start off with cvs that are that are consistent so the angle goes there 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 so it's progressing from one to the other to the other end and then we'll put our sections and our data back on and surprisingly and this you know it's quite surprising really that that's quite close to the data um and i was only looking at the cvs um but you if you go backwards and forwards between studying the cvs and studying the data then you you'll be, you will be surprised quite often um i'm often surprised by how it turns out that you think oh that actually worked um now on this side here this looks odd this isn't right because we started off with a um with our curve in the center we made sure that the curvature didn't inflect and i can see from that point that point and that point that that's going to inflect because it's you know that that's going the wrong way it should be going the other way and the same here um not quite sure why that is the case but um but you know that's another thing that we need to correct so we want to do this from you know it's from all angles we've got to look at this stuff um and then if we go into cross section editor i'll bring up my y0 section here so so we can see then how we how we relate so let's try and get these hulls better so it's not just that point it's this this one here um so i think what we'll do is if you don't mind we'll stop there and then we can pick up again next time but it cb patterns are all important everywhere um so i'm just going to save that